Hi, my name's Chris. Uh huh. I'm Start Loving. Start Loving? Are you kidding me? You're Start Loving? Uh huh. This is Start Loving. So, so, uh, so, Mr. Loving, can I call you Mr. Loving? You prefer Start? What do you People prefer? People call me Start. People call you Start. Okay. I am the least fun, most focused guy you'll you'll ever meet. You'll ever meet. That's so right. I, actually, I have have um, have quote given up everything that society values exactly. So that I I don't waste a second on stuff other than what the 26,000 children that die uh, every day due to our neglect. Um, yeah. Uh, I, they, my time is theirs. It's not mine. Yeah. Where we are, of course, we are across the street from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, uh -huh. and behind us is where you spend a good deal of time, right? About 10 hours a day. About 10 hours a day. So you come here. With those twenty-six thousand souls on your heart, uh, because, and more, because that's where salvation is. Yeah, if that's where salvation. I mean, we're we're according to an article last week. I wish I could cite the, the statistics. It's New York Times. We are far and away massively a medicated society. All segments, all economic strata. Why is that? Because we're trying to save ourselves from a from totally meaningless lives. Yeah. The, the anxieties, the worries, oh, am I dressed right? You know, it, 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 on and on and on and on that eat yeah. us alive. Okay, if, if in fact I am being owned by those 26,000 children, if I keep my focus there, how much am I thinking about maybe my head's going to be bashed in tonight because I sleep on the, the streets or, gee, these ants are crawling on me or all of that stuff that ate much of my life alive. I wasn't thinking about sleeping on the street, but you know, uh, do I have money for the, for the 300, for the, for the half million dollar house mortgage, mortgage, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I'm saved from all, from of, all that. of that. And, and if that's not the gospel, brother, I have nothing to share. Yeah, I'm with you. As you do unto the least of these, that's and that's what I do. Uh, what after do. ignoring him, and no, he didn't mean that. No, society's right for 45 years. Well, maybe he was right. I think I'll try it. Save. Yeah. Save. So you're living on the streets, uh -huh. and you you sleep in Washington D.C. So that you can be I'm here and be focused. So that you can be. I am unwilling. I, I I am unwilling to have anything take a second of my life away from serving our, our neediest brothers and sisters. Yeah. And I will take any and every consequence of doing that. Right. And by virtue of doing that, no one supports this kind of work. So I live on the streets. Yes. I could decide, oh, oh no, I've got to have, no, I've got to devote every second to our neediest brothers and sisters. Yeah. The rest is our father's business. Yes. So let me ask you about your ink. You you have some awesome ink. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, yes. So um, uh, up until nanoseconds before the vision of doing this hit me, had I been asked, what do I think of, of tattoos, I, my thought was pretty strong. What an unfortunate thing to do. <laughs> I mean, the human body is, is so magnificent. Why would anyone want to do that? Yeah. And my feeling hasn't changed on that per se, but I do anything and everything that I think furthers the, the mission that I'm on. Right. And when standing right there one February morning, uh, about six in the morning, covering for Thomas, it was very cold, and, and deeply, deeply pondering after years of immersion in, in the challenge of stopping the genocide in Darfur, why are we stopping the genocide in Darfur? And what hit me was, it's because we talk. It's because we think. It's because we don't love. So, so what, what hit me was, we need to stop thinking. We need to stop talking. We need to start loving. Start loving. And in that instant, my name came clear to me. You will have a new I, name. I, I had the words on everything that I do, and it wasn't within a day or so that my question as to why I had this massive expanse of skin on my on my my head came to me. It's so it can be right there. Beautiful. And Jesus is the exemplar of that. Yeah. 
So you had the three crosses representing Jesus. Yeah. yeah. The man, the man, Jesus. Yeah. Who waged love on this earth. Who waged love on yeah. this earth. So what he said was, start loving, and what he showed us was waging yeah. love. An unviolent, all-out warrior for of, of awesome. love, a preemptive love. Awesome. So how long, you, you, you were parked here on the sidewalk across from the White House, like I said. How, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been doing this? So I have been helping out on and off for seven years as Thomas, who was quite, quite sickly in some ways, needed help with coverage. But when he died a little over two years ago, I was unwilling to see this come to an end yes. and felt that it was a significant risk with one just this one person trying to do it yeah. in Concepcion. So I stepped in and been here every day. How many of, how many are in your in the group in the peace vigil group? Okay, just two of them. Okay. So you guys take alternating shifts? We each take two shifts a day, which wow. means we're here twenty four hours a day and three sixty five. Wow. That is awesome. How do you feel about cultural Christianity? You know, there are a lot of us that claim the cross of Jesus, but then that's about all we do with it. Everyone on the planet born and who will be born in the future are my brothers and sisters. That's why I do this work. Yeah. <clears throat> I think there's nothing more cruel than um, misdiagnosing of, of flattering each other on, on, um, on the truths. One way I grasp that is if I imagine that, that I were a, uh, an oncologist, a cancer specialist, and I had a ward full of children that were facing um, uh, horrific chemotherapy, but it was going to cure them. And I had this thought, oh my gosh, I can save them from this chemotherapy. And I walk into the ward and their parents are there and I tell them, it's wonderful. You've all paid your bills, your cancer is cured, go home, you'll be fine. I've just killed all those children. Yeah. What our churches do. Yeah. So Jesus was real clear. They will know you by how you love. Yeah. Uh, do unto others all you would have them do unto you. The woman who put in a few coins, while the rich people put in lots of stuff, she put in more than than everyone because she put in everything she had. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's not the church today. Yeah. And it was not the synagogues of Jesus' day. Right. So if he were here today, he imagine? would be screaming at us, stop being Christians, start being Christian. Yeah. Stop talking about it. Yeah. Start living it. Yeah. Start being it. That's what salvation that's is. That's a good thought. He, what he was most horrified about in my reading of his of his words in life, we're the hypocrites. Mm -hmm. We're hypocrites. We are. That's we sure that's are. an honest diagnosis. We use it as a slander. It's not a slander. It's a diagnosis. It is. We are hypocrites. Yeah. We say one that. thing. We that. apply one set of standards to our immediate group. Right. And use that as license to to to, to not do that to others. Right. Um, whereas the Jesus that I know, did he, did he come and die to teach us to love our biological children? I don't think so. We did that in his day. Yeah. That wasn't a problem. Right. Did he come and die to teach us to love our congregation? No, people did that. Right. How about our nationality? No, people did that. Right. He came to die to tell us no double standards. Yes. You love your enemy as much as you love your immediate family. You, everyone is your immediate family. That was the message. Right. Everyone is your immediate family. Yes. And do we live that in Christianity? No, we do not. The opposite. We can't even do that from church to church. Am I, am I damning my brothers and sisters? Is that oncologist that finds the courage to look at the parents, uh, the child's parents in the eye and say, your child has cancer. Is he damning that child? He's offering them a chance for life. He's pushing them off the tracks. Offering them a choice. Yeah. Yeah. I was um, I was born and raised in one of the wealthiest towns in the world, Short Hills, New Jersey, a suburb of New York City. The house I was raised in, I'm sure, is today in today's market a two million dollar house. Wow. 
Uh, my dad was not born to that. He was born to poverty. He uh, was the single most loving, devoted person I've ever, I've ever encountered, very Christ-like, although few people saw that. And he mistakenly thought that the way to show his love was to charity. Was to right, yeah. right, right, right. And that was a that was a sin. That was an error. But it was an honest mistake in a in a sick culture. Sure. His character, his nature, was to be devoted to the well-being of people. Yeah. Um, I was as addicted to the intoxications, and I don't mean substances. Right. I mean the, the health care, the stuff. The stuff. I was as religiously addicted as anyone could be for most of my years. Yeah. And thank God, by about a dozen years ago, I realized this is not being alive. This is not right. good enough. Right. There's, it never is, is it? There's there's, there is, this is not life, and I believe life is available, and I, and, and, and I believe that, that joy, not pleasure, joy is the, the feeling of joy correlates with your being alive. Yeah. And I had enough experience to sense that's from radically attempting to do what's really important. Right. That's where joy comes from. Yeah. And out of selfishness, I refuse to waste the rest of my life in our insane pursuit of intoxication and joy, yeah. when I thought I could have it is intoxicating. a joyful the stuff, life. The junk, the, it, the, is the IMAC, the, it is It is chemically the, as intoxicating yeah. as cocaine or alcohol in terms of the endorphins. And, that, and probably nearly as addictive in some cases. And just, and just as addictive. So yeah. my point is, and probably, I do what I, what I do looks like hell to society. It's heaven. Yeah, I'm with you. It's heaven. Yeah, and, and, and that's the why I do it. The destructiveness of that kind of addiction is probably way worse than physical. Way worse. Way worse. Way, way worse. worse than cocaine or, or meth or anything it's like that. It's much more it's destroying insidious. The soul. Uh, it 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 is it is destroying the soul. Um, I've I've long had the the sense years before I really got grabbed into this that the, the church was just getting it so wrong. Oh, be good so that after you die you can go into heaven. And I just thought, no, Jesus was in heaven in this life to have a heart that big, yeah. to be so devoted to the well-being of humanity. Sure, they're suffering. Yeah. So, no, Jesus was telling us how to be in heaven in this life. Exactly. And it's to forget ourselves and to devote ourselves. Like devote ourselves to the well-being of the least of these. I'm with you. So if you had, let me put you on the spot, if you had 20 words to convey the message of start loving, of, of you as start loving, and as the idea of starting, starting to love, just how would you sum up your mission, your calling, and what you do at Start Loving. I am the the most enlightened, greedy person that that uh, anyone will ever meet. And salvation is in enlightened greed, the optimal human experience. The salvation from suffering, the salvation from meaninglessness, is losing ourselves in the well-being of our neediest brothers and sisters, not the wealthy aunt that drinks too much, not 26 children die every day. They are among the neediest. Yeah. The future generations we are condemning to living on a rapidly dying planet, they are the neediest. Yeah. Run toward the emergency, not away from it. All right. Immerse you, that's where love goes. Love goes to get in harm's way. Loving is the optimal human experience. Say that again. Love puts itself in harm's way. That's what love does. That's what love does. Love, and, and if it's not in suffer, such a suffering planet, if it is not in harm's way, it is not love. Right. Yeah. That was way more said than 20 that, words. You said that's all right. We, we, I won't want you to do that. I won't count them later. You said in your video the other day, love puts itself in harm's way. And we do run away from it. We do want to, we want the comfort. We want the feel good. We want the warm quilt, the soft pillow. Satan is busy. Yeah. He's busy. Yeah. Uh -huh. And if we look, 
you know, we probably all know some parent that is sort of on the line of, well, wait a minute, do they really care about their children? I mean, are they really spending the time with the children they want, you know, or if I, if I, if I think in extremes as I, as I do to try and understand things, um, we hear about a, a, two parents, their child is deathly ill, they have to sell everything to, to take care of that child. Well, we'd like to help the child, but we're not going to sell everything. Yeah. Don't we? Don't we say to ourselves, "Oh my God, what kind of people are these?" Right. That's not being alive. Right. Okay. So extend that. Everyone is our family. Yeah. And 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 where does that end? There is no end to that. So so this notion, which was a, a new clarity for me, of what love does is it goes and gets in harm's way. Some people are are upset that I'm going on another hunger strike. Start. Are, are you a martyr? I mean, are you into pain? Well, there's some honesty to those questions, so I ponder it. And no, I'm trying the best I can to get in harm's way. Yeah. Because I want to be harmed? No, I don't want tens of billions of people condemned to living on a planet yeah. that's too hot to support human life. So the yeah. best. I can figure out, I'm trying to get in harm's way. Right. That's what love that's, does. That's what love does. That's what love does. And the Jesus that I know loved every waking second. Yeah. And he said, love as I have loved. Yeah. Not as a commandment, as a gift to us. I'm going to tell you how it works, guys. Right. Love as I have loved, and you will be in heaven on this earth. When I finally started taking him at his word, yeah, it's how no we choice. work. It's how our nervous systems work. Yeah, there is choice. nothing better than loving. Yeah. Tragically, we have a multi-trillion dollar economy that is based on exactly the opposite I was idea. I just thinking that last night. That we have, we have dug ourselves literally intentionally and, li and, and, and and it seems like we've done it on purpose we've dug ourselves into a hole we that so through our greed through our selfishness through our nonsense one of my advanced degrees is in psychology and despite that I know quite a bit about the subject <laughs> I wish I were being silly uh, it, we can understand our nervous system best as made up of three components what we understand is our head, our thinking, our reasoning, our logic, our ability to analyze, our flesh, our fleshly desires, sure. and our heart. Sure. The heart being the highest form of human intelligence. That's where compassion, empathy, wisdom, vision, creativity lies. Yeah. We have a society that worships head and flesh and detests heart because it can't control it. Right. It can't make it work right. for money. Right. It can't make it addicted to stuff. Yeah. I'm not saying this was a plot, but we have a society that is the creation of our head and our flesh, mm. and our Father's kingdom is the heart. Mm. We are in the most godless society there's ever been. Yeah. It's insanity. Never imagined, imagined, I couldn't even imagine the possibility that I would reach the point that I have where the same way any of us would walk past an alcoholic stretched out on the street or a crack addict stretched out on the street and, and look at them with compassion and say, oh my God, mm. what, what, what a hellish existence. Yeah. I never could have imagined the possibility I would reach the point where I look at us exactly that way, yeah. where I look at my 45 years of being totally addicted to the houses, the cars, the status, the vacations, the the selfish intoxications. Yeah. Not with a moralistic, oh, I was so bad. It's like, what a non-life, what a hellish right. existence. The crack addict does what they do because they think it's heaven. Sure. But we can look at it. We can look at it and say, no, that's hell. That is. Okay, so that's how I see and when you see so, somebody like that, you don't see the crack addict in the physical flesh, do you? You see their heart and their soul. You see the creation of God, do you not? I see, I, I, feel, their, I feel their pain. Yeah. 
Uh, and so, so it's like what you're saying, but it's more specific than that. I feel the pain. Yeah. Their pain is my pain. And yeah. what do you want to do when you feel pain? I want to make it stop. Yeah. Yeah. So when you said one of your videos recently that your job is not to succeed, or I, I'm, I'm not going to say it right. It's okay. You say it it's the way all you right. Say it. It's all right. Say it's what you said. Uh -huh. Your job is not to. Um, the way I've heard it say said within the so-called Christian church is we are not called to be successful. We are called to be faithful. Right. That's a much higher standard than the right. insanity of success orientation that we have here. Why? Because that paralyzes us. Yeah. I can't go and do something unless I know how to succeed. Right. It's not the rule of the and, heart. And we get hung up on in, in solving the entire problem. Right? I think one thing we do is is we want to solve the entire problem or not at all. You know, we can't fix a small piece without fixing you know, like, okay, let's say we're talking about abortion. Right. It's like we want to stand back and not if we can't end abortion, we don't want to do anything. Isn't that weird? We're polarized that way. Well, I I, I hear you, but actually the the um, the the the, the, the the head and the flesh react that way. Hey, I'm going to do this if I can see how to succeed. Right. Otherwise, I've got a plan. I've got to think. Okay, so the mother who is uh, is out on a country road with her child, and the car flipped, and they and she wakes up, and her child is under the car, and there's no one around to help. Okay, if she's a healthy mother. What she's going to try and do is get that car off the child. Right. It's impossible. It can't be done. It doesn't matter. She's going to try. The heart starts with yeah. what needs to be done and how much time do we have. Yeah. The head and the flesh start with, I'd like to do this, but can I see how? Is it cost effective? Can I do yeah, it? What are yeah. people going to think of me? Right. Every, this is the Father's kingdom. Yeah. This is where miracles come from. Yeah. The women that got other women the right to vote in this country, did they do it because they saw how to do it? Because they saw they could succeed? They were honest. We're not going to succeed at this. We can't do this. We're do it anyway. We can't sit on the sidelines. Yeah. But really all that I've done is I've moved out of my head and my flesh into the heart. heart. Solely heart. That's the only significant decision any of us ever make from second to second, day to day, yeah. year to year. You know what classified rapids are? No. So rapids are graded by one. Oh, you mean like five. white, white, rider white rapids. water okay. rapids? Class five rapids are like right. the most dangerous. I think maybe yeah. it's a class six. The decision of a rafter is: Am I going to get on the rapids or not? If I get on the rapids, the rapids are now going to largely determine where I go. Yeah. I have some little influence, but basically, the decision was made, am I going to get on the raft or not? Yeah. Right? The decision is made, am I going to move into the heart or not? Right. If I move into the heart, that's the Father's kingdom. He's going to decide. Yeah. I may get some clues as to what's going on. I can decide to get off the river. Yeah. But as long as I stay in the heart, it's like, you want me to do what? Yeah. Tattoos on my face? What? Leave a half million dollar house? What? Yeah. What? A, a three hundred thousand dollar year career? Yeah. What? And it's not blind. It's like, does this make any sense? Are there any historical precedents where the people I admire did they do stuff like? And if there's enough yeses, I don't get it. But yes, I'm in. I'm gonna. Right. I'm gonna do it. Say that again. I don't get it. But yes, I'm gonna do it. So so so. It's it's a it's a geez, the people we admire in the society, the Donald Trumps, the right, you know, right. the, the 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 barons of, of that of that nature, we know that they're high stakes gamblers, right? Yeah. They're not stupid, they don't throw their money away, they're creatures of the head and the flesh. Right. But they take risks. They do. Well the heart is much wiser than that, much more difficult to understand. Okay. We can control the head. We can understand the head. We, all we can decide to do is let the heart control us, but we can try and guess. What, am I really hearing it clearly? What's it telling me? Does this make yeah. any sense at all? It makes some sense. I don't get it, but I think it's telling me the right thing. Einstein famously said, we, use, we only use 20% of our brain. Right. right. I'm almost certain that what he meant was, 
we use our head and our flesh, that's the 20%. This is the 80%. This is the sure. math, and I don't mean what's physically beating. I mean the part of right. our nervous system right. associated with those functions we think of as the heart. That's the massive supercomputer. Yeah. It's constantly integrating everything that it sees from a human standpoint. And, and we have to listen, we have to create space to listen really carefully, particularly against the cacophony of a multi-trillion dollar economy that hates this right. and worships this. Right. But if we do, this is where the power is. This where is where is. the inspiration is. This is where the scientific discoveries come from. Yeah. This is where the great art comes from. Yeah. yeah. Well, Mr. Loving, to start, I want to thank you for your time. And I want to encourage you to hit this little link right here and go find Start Loving on YouTube so that you can, uh, I don't know, learn, grow, and maybe even see what this heart does in your life. Thanks for watching. I know you won't receive this, and I know you won't hear it, but you're an inspiration. Um, I know you won't. No, please let me say this. Um, um, love is an inspiration. Yeah. I, I get it. I get what Jesus... So yeah. why do you call me good? Right. Only, only the Father is good. The Father is love. At yeah. least that's the part we can experience. This yeah. is my brother Leon. Uh, uh, so if I am of any hope, Chris, it is because it is not me. It is simply that I use what we don't in the society, our heart. And you're tugging on what we all have but want to deny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.